And part of that discussion is just going to be what type of patient, what sort of reaction could someone have had that would warrant uh, being sent to, to an allergist. And then also some discussion of the uh, epinephrine auto injectors that are available because unlike in years past, we now actually have several different auto injectors that are available. So I'm gonna review what, what's out there and, and hopefully so people will be familiar with them that when they prescribe them for a patient, they can actually demonstrate how to use them because of course, the, the time to find out how to use your auto injector is not w at the time of need. You need to have some familiarity, w familiarity with it ahead of time. Um, probably the biggest misconception and, and something that I'm going to talk about today, uh, patients can often have what are called large local reactions. So they're stung, for example, on their thumb and their whole arm swells up. Well, that's clearly more of a reaction than most people get. It seems very alarming to them. Uh, it often seems very alarming to a physician if they seek medical care for that. And they're often told that that portends a worse reaction with subsequent stings. So there, there's a very common misperception that if you were stung and your, your, your arm or hand swelled up after the sting this time, that the next time you're going to have uh, low blood pressure, pass out, or un be unable to breathe, and so forth. And actually, the truth is that those sort of large local reactions, even though they're, they're more than most people get, they're, they're clearly more than a, a usual reaction to a bee sting, um, they actually do not increase the chance of a more serious reaction with a subsequent sting. So those patients actually just need reassurance rather than a referral. Uh, but patients who have had any other sort of systemic symptoms, if there's been any suggestion that they had difficulty breathing or were lightheaded and so forth, then those are patients who clearly deserve a referral to uh, an allergy clinic uh, where the main thing that we can offer them is venom immunotherapy, al allergy shots with the venom, which, which virtually eliminates their risk of a, of a systemic reaction if they were to be stung again, because those are clearly potentially life-threatening reactions. Um, as with other immunotherapy, just like when we do pollen immunotherapy for people with hay fever, we start at a low dose and, and progressively increase their dose to where uh, patients are ultimately tolerating with each allergy shot to the venom the equivalent of about two stings. And, uh, and then they stay on those for a total of about five years. And for most patients, then they can stop after that because they will have long-term long protection afterwards. In terms of stinging insect, there's some kind of common advice that's given for, for people to look and smell as little like a flower as possible um, to try to avoid attracting them. But, but you're right, they're, they're really unpredictable. And in the same thing with food allergy, people who have anaphylactic reactions to foods, uh, it's really unpredictable. And, and for that reason, that's why the, the, the patient having self-injectable epinephrine is critical to, to, to have it available, to know how to use it, to know when to use it. Uh, to be prepared to treat a reaction if they were to have one. So uh, both with stinging insects and with foods, those are the, the most common examples by far where people should have an auto injector available uh, and, and know how to use it.